Hey guys, do check my star here. Uh, just want to do a quick video on um, on Rao Pal and what he thinks is going on within the market. And uh, he's on uh, Rao Kiyosaki's radio show, Rich Dad Poor Dad. He's um, a crypto investor, and um, yeah, it's, it's a different perspective from what we are hearing going on in the market. And then I'll touch on why Britain is uh, once again. <laughs> We'll touch on that, and um, BlackRock remains bullish, and also Goldman Sachs is actually going to possibly uh, get into Celsius, so let's get this off. Hold on, guys. At Davos, Switzerland, the IMF stood up and said, um, um, the world, the world economy, economy is hitting is into the worst economic, economic headwinds since World, since World War, War II. II. The worst. The worst. And that's, and that's why, why it could, it be, could bad be bad news, news but, depending but depending on how you look at it, it could be very good news. news. And, our and our guest today is our dear friend Ralph Pell, and I want to thank you for making Kim and I very rich. And the, and the, re <laughs> no, and the reason is because I, you know, I don't know anything about crypto, and you're the crypto king. And I called you and I said, what should I do? Because crypto was falling like a rock. Uh, this is a while ago now. And so, I, and so I, Kim and I picked up 30, 30 Bitcoin at 6,000, Kim. Nice trade. And 30 Bitcoin at 9,000. And, you know, as all traders do, read is not good. <laughs> we stopped. And I'm still waiting for a retrace back down to maybe 11, you know, and we'll get back in. Any comments, Kim, on me? Because we, 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 we love people that make us rich, right? Yes, we, yes, we do. Yes, we do. And, and I'm excited to have Raul on their show. And, and Raul is the, um, the founder and CEO of Global Macro Investor and Real Vision. And Real Vision, I've been watching so many of your videos, and it is a wealth of information and education. Um, we talk about real teachers and fake teachers. You're a real teacher talking about what you do and what you are living every single day. So I just want to jump in and get started. And I think, Robert, you've got the, the million dollar question. I just got one big question, okay? Kipasa. What does it mean when that, you know, the Davos, Switzerland, the IMF says we're heading into the worst financial headwinds since World War II? So you're so your global macro. What does, what does that mean for the world, Ralph? This is about as macro an environment as I've ever seen. And I think most people's read on it is probably wrong right now. <laughs> so, okay, let's go back and say, I'm going to go take you through a history lesson, and then we'll get to today. That's exactly why I'm concerned. So, why World War II? World War II was a fascinating period because, like COVID, the entire world had basically, had basically been stuck, been stuck at home or been, been on, on, you know, you know, on battlefields. Everyone came, Everyone came back. There was no, there was no supply, supply of, of, commodities of commodities and goods. And goods. Global, Global supply chains were broken and everybody, and everybody came back and started consuming again. And guess what? And guess what? Inflation, inflation went up to 13 percent or something, uh, maybe, uh, maybe even higher. And, and that, period that period was fascinating because, because interest, rate interest rates went up. And the, and the first thing, first thing that happened was the economy, was the economy went, straight went straight back into recession and rates and inflation went negative because it was a massive, was a massive tightening, tightening of monetary conditions. conditions. You raised the cost of goods on people and didn't raise their salaries enough. People couldn't, people couldn't get the goods that they wanted, they wanted exactly like now and, and everything, everything collapsed. So we went, so we went back into recession and then eventually, and then eventually some, some better times, times. and I'll come back into the 1940s and 50s because I think it's a really important parallel that most people misunderstand. The next time we saw anything remotely like this was 1974. A lot of people tell you it's the 70s again, inflation, inflation. Well, the inflation episode we had in the late 70s was driven by demographics. That was, that was the baby boomers entering the workforce all at the same time. It was the largest demand shock the world had ever seen. And we, had a, and we had a supply shock of these oil crises of the Arab oil embargo. That's, That's not repeating now. now. What, is what is it actually more similar is 1974. 1974 was the Arab oil embargo. The price, the price of oil tripled, tripled and interest rates, interest rates went up. up. Inflation, Inflation shot, shot up. And, and the immediate effect was the economy, the economy went down the toilet. Almost, almost do not pass go. The stock market fell 50%. 50%. 
and the, and the ISM, ISM survey, survey, which is a good guide to the business cycle. cycle. It's the, the Institute of Supply Management survey. survey. Any time it crosses below 50, suggests the economy is getting weak. A recession comes at about 47. It hit 30, which was the lowest in all history. And it happened in a space of four months. It went from roughly where it is today, which is around 55, and went to the lowest level in four months, based on exactly the same kind of setup we've got now. So are you saying that the 70s are now pretty close? Yes, yes. and inflation fell in 1974 afterwards. People are from Rapal. Yes, we're, we're kind of at rock bottom, but things will and are likely to improve over time. Look, we're here in Britain again, this month's the sixth man of Europe, the UK's predicted record worst economic growth of any major country except Russia next year. What has gone wrong? Right, well, I live in Europe, I live in Britain. Um, Boris kept saying, oh, we're the fastest growing economy in the G7, da da da. That's a little bollocks. It's a lie. We are in dire straits at the moment. And um, as for Russia being in um, in a different place in terms of um, will we'll likely to be worst hit um, except us, I don't think so because that's quite not right. Because Russia, Russia produces oil, has grain, has lots of things the worst needs. We don't do anything here we import. So how can that be that we are likely to be the same with Russia? I don't get that. I really don't. We used to be a uh, manufacturer. We used to have all those things. We used to be um, exporters, etc. But now we're net importers. So how can that be? Anyway, I'll leave that. And then uh, BlackRock. Um, BlackRock. Um, remains bullish on blockchain. Um, they're basically saying that, um, I don't know how to say that, Salam Rahaji, uh, Ramji, International Head of ETS and, Intake, uh, ETS and Index Investments of at Funding Titan BlackRock, provided some ex ex excessive reward for blockchain in a current interview with London based monetary information claiming that. The know how which undefines Bitcoin and different con uh, cryptocurrencies is extremely disruptive and revolutionary. The senior government understood blockchain potential to spice up effectively, um, effectively of the monetary markets. Brand James, I hope I'm saying that right, upbeat feedback about blockchain came after BlackRock launched an ETF that tracks a basket of 41 blockchain related firms, Coinbase the most important cryptocurrency chart change within the US makes the most important share of product holdings. But BlackRock shouldn't be bought oh, shouldn't be bought on crypto itself simply but Ramji's instructed the outlet that is nonetheless had no intention of rolling out its personal blockchain product even though main monetary firms resembling uh, constituencies have provided you with their ETF functions. He explains that BlackRock has to resign as much as expectations by the way of high quality and regulated compliance. This is the problem. I hope I didn't butcher the reading of that. I, did, I, did, I tried my best guys, sorry, but if I butchered that Hey, it's all it is. It's what it is. You guys can go and look for it. Um, it's on crypto and coin news. Um, basically, I see this as lack of regular cherry compliance. If we don't know we're all regulatory um, laws and whatever you want to call it, we don't have them. This is the problem. When we have them, then we're going to see a lot more of the Black Rocks and the Goldman Sachs and things like that getting involved. Um, then we're going to go to. Oh, so just do that. Hold on a second. Who cares? Hopefully soon. Oh, go away. All right. This is the daily the daily huddle. New York uh, unveils expansion of stable coin regulations require requires cash backing, which I think is a great thing. Oh, this is messed up now. 
oh, live. It's what I do. Uh, the state of New York is revealing an expansion of its stablecoin regulations now requiring the dollar peg crypto assets to fully buy cash, which is great. And we want to see that. We want to see um, these things come to fruition. I'm sick and tired of, um, uh, well, not regu no regulations in this space. And this is a good thing. And I'm going to go on to um, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs aims to raise two billion to buy Celsius crypto assets and a discount uh, report. Goldman Sachs has reportedly raised two billion to uh, accumulate distressed assets from Celsius network. If the situation with Celsius worsens any further and the company has to file bankruptcy, Goldman Sachs wants to reach to wants to be ready to buy up crypto assets at a discount. As such, the Wall Street behemoth aims to raise two billion reports. Say, my thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts. Mm. It's all a bit sudden, isn't it? And I think this is what these companies have been um, waiting for these black rocks and these all these um, uh, big institutions. Whether it's been coordinated or planned or not, we don't know. We do not know. We cannot prove that. But the fact is, they're now coming in after all the fud that they had about, oh, crypto is this, crypto is that. We, we don't, talk, don't want to touch Bitcoin. Any, any of our support, our, our staff buying blockchain, uh, Bitcoin, da, 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 will be sacked. All this uh, bullshit that come out from these companies. Look, right? They are now going to take on these big companies, like, such as Celsius, that which, you know, if you look at it, it's too big to bail up to a certain extent. They'll come and bail them out, take all their assets, etc., etc. Guess what? Those who are who are invested in Celsius in, in terms of their cryptocurrencies uh, or have um, assets on the platform are going to lose out. This happens time and time again. Not your keys, not your crypto. Okay, remember that. If it's not your keys, it ain't your crypto. Get yourself a ledger. Get yourself a decent wallet. Get yourself some kind of wallet where you have control over your assets. You can still stake from some wallets and still have access to your crypto. It doesn't mean that they stay on the platform. They're still yours because you stake them through the ledger. But the, the ledger the, uh, does not, uh, will not say, um, make your cryptos be lost because they're still on the ledger. You can still do that if you want to. And there is the ledger now. Out there, that is really good. I use that. I've got two of them. I store all my assets on there, and I'm going to be moving a lot more onto it off of these exchanges because the more time goes on, the less trust I have. I used to be with Celsius. Trust me, I used to have an account with Celsius. I, I still have an account, but I don't have any money on it anymore. Why? Because something like this could have happened. I was warned about this a long time ago that these things could happen. You know, we don't know who else is going to go down. BlockFi is, is um, one of those other ones that I was, I was involved in. I had money on there, but I took it off. You know, um, you guys need to wake up to what's going on. Take your assets off of these exchanges and get them on to a secure wallet where you hold the keys. Until regulations is, is here, then that's what you've got to do if you want to protect your assets. Anyway, take care, guys. Take Have a good one. You take my stuff out and remember... Don't get scammed, get regulated.